Agathon. Abba Peter, the disciple of Abba Lot, said, One day, when I was in Abba Agathon's cell, a brother came in and said to him, I want to live with the brethren. Tell me how to dwell with them. The old man answered him, All the days of your life keep the frame of mind of the stranger which you have on the first day you join them, so as not to become too familiar with them. The Abba Macarius asked, And what does this familiarity produce? The old man replied, It is like a strong burning wind. Each time it arises, everything flies swept before it, and it destroys the fruit of the trees. So Abba Macarius said, Is speaking too freely really as bad as all that? Abba Agathon said, No passion is worse than an uncontrolled tongue, because it is the mother of all the passions. Accordingly, the good workman should not use it, even if he is living as a solitary in the cell. I know a brother who spent a long time in his cell using a small bed, who said, I should have left my cell without making use of that small bed, if no one had told me it was there. It is the hard-working monk who is a warrior. Abba Agathon said, Under no circumstances should the monk let his conscience accuse him of anything. He also said, Unless he keeps the commandments of God, a man cannot make progress, not even a single virtue. He also said, I have never gone to sleep with a grievance against anyone, and, as far as I could, I have never let anyone go to sleep with a grievance against me. It was said concerning Abba Agathon that some monks came to find him having heard tell of his great discernment. Wanting to see if he would lose his temper, they said to him, Aren't you that Agathon, who is said to be a fornicator and a proud man? Yes, it is very true, he answered. They resumed, Aren't you that Agathon, who is always talking nonsense? I am. Again they said, Aren't you that Agathon the heretic? But at that he replied, I am not a heretic. So they asked him, Tell us why you accepted everything we cast you, but repudiated this last insult. He replied, The first accusations I take to myself, for that is good for my soul. But heresy is separation from God. Now I have no wish to be separated from God. At this saying they were astonished at his discernment and returned edified. It was said of Abba Agathon that he spent a long time building a cell with his disciples. At last, when it was finished, they came to live there. Seeing something during the first week which seemed to him harmful, he said to his disciples, Get up, let us leave this place. But they were dismayed and replied, If you had already decided to move, why have we taken so much trouble building the cell? People will scandalize at us and will say, Look at them, moving again, what unstable people! He saw that they were held back by timidity, and so he said to them, If some are scandalized, others, on the contrary, will be much edified and will say, How blessed are they who go away for God's sake, having no other care! However, let him who wants to come, come, as for me, I am going. Then they prostrated themselves to the ground, and besought him to allow them to go with him. It was said of him that he often went away taking nothing but his knife for making wicker baskets. Someone asked Abba Agathon, Which is better, bodily asceticism or interior vigilance? The old man replied, Man is like a tree. Bodily asceticism is the foliage. Interior vigilance the fruit. According to that which is written, Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit shall be cut down and cast into the fire. It is clear that all our care should be directed towards the fruit, that is to say, 
guard of the spirit, but it needs the protection and the embellishment of the foliage, which is bodily asceticism. The brethren also asked him, Amongst all good works, which is the virtue which requires the greatest effort? He answered, Forgive me, but I think there is no labor greater than that of prayer to God. For every time a man wants to pray, his enemies, the demons, want to prevent him, for they know that it is only by turning him from prayer that they can hinder his journey. Whatever good work a man undertakes, if he perseveres in it, he will attain rest, but prayer is warfare to the last breath. Abba Agathon was wise in spirit and active in body. He provided everything he needed for himself in manual work, food and clothing. The same Abba Agathon was walking with his disciples. One of them, finding a small green pea on the road, said to the old man, Father, may I take it? The old man, looking at him with astonishment, said, Was it you who put it there? No, replied the brother. How then, continued the old man, can you take up something which you did not put down? A brother came to find Abba Agathon and said to him, Let me live with you. On his way he had found a piece of nitre on the road and had brought it with them. Where did you find that nitre? asked the old man. The brother replied, I found it on the road as I was coming and I picked it up. The old man said to him, If you are coming to live with me, how can you take that which you did not put down? Then he sent him to put it back where he had found it. A brother asked the old man, I have received a command, but there is a danger of temptation in the place connected with it. Because of the command, I wish to do it, but I am afraid of such danger. The old man said to him, If this were Agathon's problem, he would fulfill the commandment, and thus he would overcome the temptation. A meeting had been held at Skidi's about some matter, and a decision was taken about it. When Agathon came in later, he said to them, You have not decided this matter rightly. Who are you, they retorted, to talk like that? A son of man, said he, for it is written, If truly ye say that which is right, judge righteously, sons of men. It was said of Abba Agathon that for three years he lived with a stone in his mouth, until he had learnt to keep silence. It was said of him and of Abba Amon that when they had anything to sell, they would name the price just once and silently accept what was given them in peace, just as when they wished to buy something, they gave the price they asked in silence and took the object adding no further word. The same Abba Agathon said, I have never offered agapes, but the fact of giving and receiving has been for me an agape, for I consider the good of my brother to be a sacrificial offering. Whenever his thoughts urged him to pass judgment on something which he saw, he would say to himself, Agathon, it is not your business to do that. Thus his spirit was always recollected. The same Abba said, A man who is angry, even if he were to raise the dead, is not acceptable to God. At one time Abba Agathon had two disciples each leading the anchoretic life, according to his own measure. One day he asked the first, How do you live in the cell? He replied, I fast until the evening, then I eat two hard biscuits. He said to him, your way of life is good, not overburdened with too much asceticism. Then he asked the other, And you, how do you live? He replied, I fast for two days, then I eat two hard biscuits. The old man said, You work very hard by enduring two conflicts. It is a labor for someone to eat every day without greed. There are others who, wishing to fast for two days, are greedy afterwards, but you, after fasting for two days, are not greedy. A brother asked Abba Agathon about fornication. 
He answered, Go, cast your weakness before God, and you shall find rest. Abba Agathon and another old man were ill. While they were lying in their cell, the brother who was reading Genesis to them came to the chapter where Jacob said, Joseph is no more, Simeon is no more, and thou dost take Benjamin away from me. Thou wilt bring my gray hairs in sorrow to the grave. The other old man began to say, Are not the ten enough for you, Abba Jacob? But Abba Agathon replied, Let be, old man, if God is the God of the righteous, who shall condemn Jacob? Abba Agathon said, If someone were very specially dear to me, but I realized that he was leading me to do something less good, I should put him from me. He also said, A man ought at all times to be aware of the judgments of God. One day, when the brethren were conversing about charity, Abba Joseph said, Do we really know what charity is? Then he told how when a brother came to see Abba Agathon, he greeted him, and did not let him go until he had taken with him a small knife which he had. Abba Agathon said, If I could meet a leper, give him my body, and take his, I should be very happy. That indeed is perfect charity. It was also said of him that, coming to the town one day to sell his wares, he encountered a sick traveler lying in the public place without any one to look after him. The old man rented a cell and lived with him there, working with his hands to pay the rent, and spending the rest of his money on the sick man's needs. He stayed there for four months till the sick man was restored to health. Then he returned in peace to his cell. Abba Daniel said, Before Abba Arsenius came to live with my fathers, they dwelt with Abba Agathon. Now Abba Agathon loved Abba Alexander, because he was both ascetic and discreet. Now it happened that all the disciples were washing their rushes in the river, but Abba Alexander was washing his with discretion. The other brother said to the old man, Brother Alexander is getting nowhere. Wishing to cure them, he said to him, Brother Alexander, wash them thoroughly, because they are flax. The brother was hurt by these words. Afterwards the old man comforted him, saying, Did I not know that you were working well? But I said that in front of them, in order to cure them by your obedience, brother. It was said of Abba Agathon that he forced himself to fulfill all the commandments. When he sailed in a vessel, he was the first to handle the oars, and when the brethren came to see him, he laid the table with his own hands, as soon as they had prayed, because he was full of the love of God. When he was at the point of death, he remained three days with his eyes fixed wide open. The brethren roused him, saying, Abba Agathon, where are you? He replied, I am standing before the judgment seat of God. They said, Are you not afraid, Father? He replied, Until this moment, I have done my utmost to keep the commandments of God, but I am a man. How should I know if my deeds are acceptable to God? The brethren said to him, Do you not have confidence in all that you have done according to the law of God? The old man replied, I have no confidence until I meet God. Truly the judgment of God is not that of man. When they wanted to question him further, he said to them, of your charity, do not talk to me any more, for I no longer have time. So he died with joy. They saw him depart like one greeting his dearest friends. He preserved the strictest vigilance in all things, saying, Without great vigilance a man does not advance in even a single virtue. Going to town one day to sell some small articles, Abba Agathon met a cripple on the roadside paralyzed in his legs, who asked him where he was going. Abba Agathon replied, To town, to sell some things. The other said, Do me a favor of carrying me there. So he carried him to the town. 
the cripple said to him, Pull me down where you sell your wares. He did so. When he had sold an article, the cripple asked, What did you sell it for? And he told him the price. The other said, Buy me a cake. And he bought it. When Ab Agathon had sold a second article, the sick man asked, How much did you sell it for? And he told him the price of it. The other said, Buy me this. And he bought it. When Agathon, having sold all his wares, wanted to go, he said to him, Are you going back? And he replied, Yes. Then he said, Do me a favor of carrying me back to the place where you found me. Once more picking him up, he carried him back to that place. Then the cripple said, Agathon, you are filled with divine blessings in heaven and on earth. Raising his eyes, Agathon saw no man. It was an angel of the Lord, come to try him. Amonas A brother asked Abba Amonas, Give me a word. And the old man replied, Go, make your thoughts like those of the evildoers who are in prison, for they are always asking when the magistrate will come, awaiting him in anxiety. Even so, the monk ought to give himself at all times to accusing his own soul, saying, Unhappy wretch that I am! How shall I stand before the judgment seat of Christ? What shall I say to him in my defense? If you give yourself continually to this, you may be saved. It was said of Abba Amonas that he had killed a basilisk, going into the desert one day to draw water from the lake, and seeing a basilisk, he threw himself face to the ground, saying, Lord, either I die or he does, and immediately, by the power of God, the basilisk burst asunder. Abba Amonas said, I have spent fourteen years in Skites, asking God night and day to grant me the victory over anger. One of the fathers, telling about the cells, said there was once a hard-working old man there who wore a mat. He went to find Abba Amonas, who, when he saw him wearing the mat, said to him, This is no use to you. But the old man questioned him in the following way. Three thoughts occupy me, either should I wander in the deserts, or should I go to a foreign land where no one knows me, or should I shut myself up in a cell without opening the door to anyone, eating only every second day? Abba Amonas replied, It is not right for you to do any of these three things. Rather, sit in your cell and eat a little every day, keeping the world of the publican always in your heart, and you may be saved. Some brethren found life difficult where they were living. Wanting to leave, they came to find Abba Amonas. He was out on the river. Seeing them walking along the bank of the river, he asked the sailors to put him ashore. Then he called the brethren, saying to them, I am Amonas, to whose dwelling you are wanting to go. Having comforted their hearts, he sent them back whence they had come, for this difficulty did not arise from sickness of soul, but simply from natural annoyance. One day, when Abba Amonas went to cross the river, he found the ferry boat ready to go and sat down on it. Then another boat came to the place and transported the men who were there. They said to him, Come here, father, and cross the river with us. But he replied, I will not embark except in the public vessel. As he had a handful of palm branches, he sat down, weaving them, and then undoing them, until the boat came alongside. Thus he made the crossing. Then the brethren made him a reverence, saying, Why did you do that? The old man said to them, So as to walk without any anxiety of spirit. That is an example. We must walk in the way of God in peace. Abba Amonas was going to pay a visit to Abba Antony one day, and he lost his way. So, sitting down, he fell asleep for a little while. On waking, he prayed thus to God, I beseech you, O Lord my God, do not let your creature perish. 
Then there appeared to him, as it were, a man's hand in the heavens, which showed him the way, till he reached Abba Antony's cave. Abba Antony predicted that this Abba Amones would make progress in the fear of God. He led him outside his cell, and showing him a stone, he said to him, Hurt this stone and beat it. He did so. Then Antony asked him, Has the stone said anything? He replied, No. Then Antony said, You too will be able to do that. And that is what happened. Abba Amonas advanced to the point where his goodness was so great he took no notice of wickedness. Thus, having become bishop, someone brought a young girl who was pregnant to him, saying, See what this unhappy wretch has done. Give her a penance. But he, having marked the young girl's womb with the sign of the cross, commanded that six pairs of fine linen sheets should be given her, saying, It is for fear that, when she comes to give birth, she may die, she or the child, and have nothing for the burial. But her accusers resumed, Why did you do that? Give her a punishment. But he said to them, Look, brothers, she is near to death. What am I to do? Then he sent her away, and no old man dared accuse anyone any more. It was said of him that some people came to him to be judged, and Abba Amones feigned madness. A woman standing near him said to her neighbor, The old man is mad. Abba Amones heard it, called her, and said, How much labor have I given myself in the desert to acquire this folly, and through you I have lost it today. Abba Amones came one day to eat in a place where there was a monk of evil repute. Now it happened that a woman came and entered the cell of the brother of evil reputation. The dwellers in that place, having learnt this, were troubled and gathered together to chase the brother from his cell. Knowing that Bishop Amonas was in that place, they asked him to join them. When the brother in question learnt this, he hid the woman in a large cask. The crowd of monks came to the place. Now Abba Amonas saw the position clearly, but for the sake of God he kept the secret. He entered, seated himself on the cask, and commanded the cell to be searched. Then when the monks had searched everywhere without finding the woman, Abba Amonas said, What is this? My God forgive you. After praying, he made everyone go out. Then taking the brother by the hand, he said, Brother, be on your guard. With these words he withdrew. Abba Amonas was asked, What is the narrow and hard way? He replied, The narrow and hard way is this, to control your thoughts and to strip yourself of your own will for the sake of God. This is also the meaning of the sentence, Lo, we have left everything and followed you. Achilles Three old men, of whom one had a bad reputation, came one day to Abba Achilles. The first asked him, Father, make me a fishing net. I will not make you one, he replied. Then the second said, Of your charity make one, so that we may have a souvenir of you in the monastery. But he said, I do not have time. Then the third one who had a bad reputation, said, Make me a fishing net, so that I may have something from your hands, father. Abba Achilles answered him at once, For you I will make one. Then the two other old men asked him privately, Why did you not want to do what we asked you, but you promised to do what he asked? The old man gave them this answer, I told you I would not make one, and you were not disappointed, since you thought that I had no time. But if I had not made one for him, he would have said, The old man has heard about my sin, and that is why he does not want to make me anything. And so our relationship would have been broken down. But now I have cheered his soul, so that he will not be overcome with grief. Abba Bitamius said, One day, when I was going down to Scythes, someone gave me some fruit to take to the old man. So I knocked on the door of Abba Achilles' cell, to give him some. 
But he said to me, Brother, from now on I do not want you to knock on my door with any sort of food, and do not go to knock at any other cells either. So I withdrew to my cell and took the fruit to the church. Abba Achilles came one day to Abba Isaiah's cell at Skidi's, and found him in the act of eating something. He had mixed it with salt and water on a plate. The old man, seeing that he was hiding it behind some planted reeds, said to him, Tell me, what are you eating? He replied, Forgive me, father, I was cutting palm leaves, and I went out in the heat, and I put a morsel in my mouth, with some salt, but the heat burnt my throat, and the mouthful did not go down. So I was obliged to add a little water to the salt, in order to swallow it. Forgive me, father. The old man said, Come, all of you, and see Isaiah eating sauce in Skittis. If you want to eat sauce, go to Egypt. An old man, who came to see Ab Achilles, found him spitting blood out of his mouth. He asked him, What is the matter, father? The old man answered, The word of a brother grieved me. I struggled not to tell him so, and I prayed to God to rid me of this word. So it became like blood in my mouth, and I have spat it out. Now I am in peace, having forgotten the matter. Abba Amoez said, With Abba Bitamius we went to see Abba Achilles. We heard him meditating on this saying, Do not fear, Jacob, to go down into Egypt. For a long time he remained making this meditation. When we knocked, he opened the door and asked us where we came from. Being afraid to say we came from the cells, we replied, From the mountain of Nitria. Then he said to us, what can I do for you who come from so far away? He asked us to come in. We noticed that he had been working the whole night and had woven a great deal, and we asked him to say a word to us. He said to us, From yesterday evening till now I have woven twenty measures, although I do not need it. But it is for fear God should be angry and accuse me, saying, Why did you not work when you could have done so? That is why I gave myself this labor, and do as much as I can. So we went away greatly edified. Another time a great old man came to the Thebaid to see Abba Achilles, and said to him, Father, you are a temptation to me. He said to him, Come, even you, old man, you are still tempted because of me? In his humility the old man replied, Yes, father. Now there was an old blind and lame man sitting close to the door. The old man said to him, I should like to have stayed here several days, but I cannot because of the old man. At these words Abba Achilles wondered at the old man's humility and said, This is not fornication, but hatred of the evil demons. Amoez It was said of Abba Amoez, that when he went to church, he did not allow his disciple to walk beside him, but only at a certain distance. And if the latter came to ask him about his thoughts, he would move away from him as soon as he had replied, saying to him, It is for fear that, after edifying words, a revelant conversation should slip in, that I do not keep you with me. At first, Abba Amoaz said to Abba Isaiah, What do you think of me now? he said to him, You are an angel, father. Later on he said to him, And now, what do you think of me? He replied, You are like Satan. Even when you say a good word to me, it is like steel. It was said of Abba Amoaz that, illness having kept him in bed for many long years, he never allowed himself to think about his cell or look to see what it contained for people brought him many things on account of his illness. When John, his disciple, entered, or went out, he would close his eyes, so as not to see what he was doing, for he knew that he was a faithful monk. Abba Pimin said that a brother came to find Abba Moez to ask him for a word. He remained with him for seven days without the old man answering him. Then, sending him away, the latter said to him, Go, watch yourself, 
As for me, my sins have become a well of darkness between me and God. It was said of Abba Moes that he had fifty measures of wheat for his use and had put them out in the sun. Before they were properly dried off, he saw something in that place which seemed to him to be harmful, so he said to his servants, Let us go away from here. But as they were grieved at this, seeing their dismay, he said to them, Is it because of the loaves that you are sad? Truly I have seen monks fleeing, leaving their whitewashed cells, and also their parchments, and they did not close the doors, but went leaving them open.'"